Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Alice and Barbara, Jim, Phoebe, Celeste. Today we are celebrating the poetry and birthday, May 2nd, 1938, of the late Holly Prado with a reading from her Nothing Breaks Off at the Edge, New Rivers Press, 1976. I love the title, the precise images, asymmetrical rhythms. Whatever she goes through, she creates original beauty in this inner and outer journey to restore her soul. Holly's poems and prose poems contain sexual vitality and earthiness and always transformations. There's a goddess at work in her alchemy. She began writing prose poems in the early 1970s after Amin Alwan, a fellow poet, turned her on to it. She excelled in the prose poems. Holly and I talked poetry morning to night. She was a deeply respected teacher and a beloved poet. I love Holly with all my heart, and I miss her every minute of the day. To me, she is one of the top five poets to ever come out of LA. She said in an, in an MPTF documentary, I love writing, it's the deepest pleasure I know. The poets and writers who are reading each had a singular relationship with Holly. She loved them all. The readers in order of appearance are Alison Townsend, James Cushing, Phoebe McAdams, Celeste Goyer, Barbara Crane. Here's Alison Townsend. Such a pleasure to be here with you guys. Reading from this book, which I think I bought at Chatterton's in 1977. I'm going to read three pieces. The first one is a short poem. It's called The Garden. Rilke has said that each man will take with him from the earth one word that he loves most. I have been thinking all evening, just in case, and can't go beyond lizard. It's a quintessential holly. Second piece is a prose poem, and it's in sort of little block sections. <clears throat> She mentions splitting from her husband here. She obviously means her first husband. <laughs> um, Rainmaking. Someplace in New Mexico, I slept for 12 hours in my sleeping bag in the back seat of my car in my clothes. I woke up feeling clear and rested. The sky was pink and I ate a piece of cheese and a lot of crackers. When I got to the rest area with a John, a woman and her little girl were there. The little girl had brought her doll into pee, too. The mother had a change of clothes on hangers and was washing up. She was taking care of what needed to be done. Women know how a shirt gets dirty, how food gets eaten. Plants and moons live and die. I drove all day toward Los Angeles. All my feelings were religious. Mother mountains and ghosts of Indians, Geronimo. Cochise holdouts marked along the road. There was a dead animal, too large for a dog, at the edge of the desert. He was still bleeding. I couldn't help looking at him. For the whole trip, I felt that I was giving myself up to a cycle of some kind. I didn't understand, but I liked living it out, the sense of larger ways outside of the city. Even the ritual of driving seemed to fit, shifting gears passing trucks, stopping for gas without getting out of the car. All a gathering of symbols I didn't recognize, but felt was dictated and important. Like that woman who says Beethoven visits her and composes music through her. I had seen my friend JB in Alamogordo, New Mexico for three hours. Then I got in my car and started home again. Why 800 miles for that? an excuse to be on the road with my symbol, self, woman. I've never wanted to just give myself, hand myself out, and have always kept some stuff for me inside. Women are protected by their menstrual cycle. When they menstruate, they aren't required by the tribe to respond to sexual demands. 
they become virgins again for a few days and become their own personal selves, what they are mysteriously inside. I've done that, not just once a month. Save myself for myself, not to have it all absorbed by a man or friends or the kids I teach or the people in line at the market. Even when I want to push toward other lives. When my husband and I split up six months ago, I wanted to start giving again right away a woman's thing. To find her life in a man. To know him so well that she enters his moods and lives in them instead of in of herself. It can be very nice. The woman who lives downstairs from me is pregnant. She is really full of the baby. Sometimes I can feel her pregnancy through her ceiling, my floor, the roundness, and she and her husband and the baby, magic three, magic heaven, earth, underworld, magic family. She's taking a pottery class too, pregnant and making round pots to be filled with weeds, milk. I like having her there under my place, holding it up with all that life, but I don't feel barren because she's fertile. I need to be in that other virgin self for a while, my own secret creature, like this trip. Always a question, how to balance the transmission of life and energy and love, but keep rich levels of yourself inside. Does one feed the other? I used to think so. Now I feel more positive. I feel, I feel more positive about the idea that all of us should live alone, away from everyone, for at least two years, not to be a reflection of a style or some other man's beauty. Real initiations. You go out in the forest or up on the mountains and stay until you know something. Our entrances. So there I was driving through New Mexico, <clears throat> feeling it in all my feeling it all in my arms and back, not understanding the road or myself, but glad to be there with the ghosts. Winter is supposed to be the dead time, but it seems to be the clearest time for hearing voices. Some crows flew up in the road, shining in the air. They kept folding and unfolding, almost purple. They were quiet. But I know that sometimes a crow will go off by himself and sing. They have a song that's different from the calling that they do. A crow will find a deserted spot, even away from other crows, and sing. What we see is just a fragment of the mystery. Magic formulas always change. I'm not really all of the things that have happened to me or what I have made of them. But there are those voices. Doors closing, stars that can't be seen in the afternoon, salt, buttermilk, two dogs running down the hill with their tails up, blood, bones, parables, the urine that leaves me, my sign of the zodiac, which is the bull, the crescent moon, horned beast, feet to the ground. That 12 hours of sleep was perfect. It's taken me a month to think about it. But that was the place I turned into another start of something. I even dreamed during that night. The daughter of one of my friends was with me. She had a little girl purse open on the seat of the car. There was a clean white handkerchief inside. Another prose poem, January 30th, larger than other plants. I bought some brown shoes in Mexico that are woven like a life of hard times. Somebody left without finishing them. At first, one would hardly go on my foot. And slowly I've realized that they aren't even a pair. Some small holes in the top are in different places on the right shoe, left shoe. The back of the left shoe has a piece of leather missing that should be there. The shape of the tops, the left is pointed, the right is rounded. I didn't see these things, but now that I have, I wonder why any shoe should have to match. 
I see that each foot is different. I should listen to my left foot with great kindness. There's a growth between the little toe and the toe next to it that deserves care. The foot never complains, never whimpers or tries to make trouble. And my right foot has a sense of humor. It walks toward the mud, puts itself on the slippery rock, has a misshapen big toenail. My feet give energy a dance. The steps repeated, but never in quite the same place. Shapes of weeds that come to live between the radishes, turnips, cauliflower of the new February garden. The order that swings through the sky and catches me so that I can't shake it off. On a Sunday like this, I can give myself, I can only give myself up to it. I've surprised myself ever since I've been awake, interrupting myself with ideas, herb tea, making yogurt, talking about Catholicism, drawing with a green pen, making a second excuse not to visit friends, reading a list of images I wrote last Tuesday that don't seem what they mean, don't seem what they did. Sparrow, house, cactus, bed, wolf man. Everywhere, there's something to be looked at carefully. Every brown eye in the skin of the pineapple with its four short hairs. I thought there were only two. The pears with brown skins, like vegetables. You don't need a piece of bread or even a dish to put them in. Full of remembered forgotten taste and never easy to eat. Hard meat against your teeth. Two wrinkles at the side of my mouth that are just like my father's and my Aunt Jeanette's. Farm, ears of corn, horses, catalpa, veins in my hands. I'm aware of growing older, getting stronger and closer to my body, loving it and using it to run, breathe as I turn from self to self to self. Walking in the mountains last summer, after I had lost so much love and could think only of my empty house, I began to struggle into my body, to work with it and know that it would climb for me, that it would love me and use me without telling lies, that the blood and the sun and the water of the clean, even life would make my body fresh and that something then would happen to the order everywhere that is always right. The unmatched shoes, the feet, the open mouth, the Indian names of months, the moon of strong cold and the moon when ponies shed, the deer rutting moon and the dry grass moon. Lately, I've been seeing ghosts out of the corner of my eye. I don't know who they are, but they tell me there's an underside of the world that bears knowing. In Mexico, in the cemetery outside Ensenada, the word Pepetuidad was written on almost every gravestone or wooden marker. The flowers were everywhere, real and plastic and paper. One man had built a mausoleum, bright blue cement, over the grave of his wife. He had scratched flowers on the side and painted Mi Amor in an arc over the doorway. Inside was a bench with two small cushions on it. The cushions had ruffles around the edges and had been there for a long time. There were many graves of children. One for a little boy said, he flew to heaven at the age of three years and his picture was on the gravestone. Death can't be a failure, but part of more. One phase of the moon, hidden resources, colors between dreams to keep looking for small ways, the leaf frozen in the stone, a few yellow pencils, the wooden turtle whose legs move. When I think of my feet, I feel the Mexican shoes around them and have to wonder where I'll be the rest of the day. A bell in the air for the new month, wings. And now I think Jim Cushing's gonna read. Thank you, Allison. All medicines once came from herbs. Making it all start over. The peach tree, each red branch with a few blossoms. Other nubs waiting. 
I can't help cutting a sprig, even though I know it should stay on the tree, have its chance. I should learn to throw away, leave things alone, like saints. But I keep walking, seeing, wanting, iris, narcissus, those sunflowers that I thought had been plowed under. My old dog follows me, probably his last year. He marks every bush, and now the house with curtains blowing in a large open room, like Persia, the smell of the air of wild grasses all over an empty lot. Warmth, breath. Last July, just after I met George, we were sitting one night on the patio of his house, eating big steaks, feeling like the fig tree loaded with fruit, me stoned on homegrown grass, watching George across the table get bigger and smaller, retreat and come forward in and out of the palm leaves. He said, how old are you? And I said, 33, feeling funny, old, but relieved not to be young, full of movies, not lying, hope without flags, generosity. I like the two threes of this year, lucky and magic, trinity. I like the idea of getting older, not dying, of course, not knowing what that is, but trying to get ready by staying 33 instead of 29, not comparing. The meals get better. I save the core of the celery down in the middle at the bottom for myself. Cream, stems of spinach, nuts, killing and living. The dark teeth, the child, everything in its easiest place. Dirt on the bottom of my feet from the garden. Water, ducks. On the lake, all the shiny green heads. Then black, brown, white, mixed feathers, dashing for pieces of popcorn, shapes, forces, designs. The old men playing checkers or chess, talking, sitting on picnic tables wrapped up in winter coats from thrift shops. One man without an eye, one whose hands could hardly pick up some crumbs from a muffin that he had dropped on the table. He spent a long minute reaching, just barely able, shaking and dying. I did stare, but not in that maudlin way people have about aging men. He was still able to grasp for something. Full of not giving up, his mouth was angry. In the art supply store, all beautiful colors, I bought a sheet of red, dark red textured big paper. I thought of making a print for spring, a cow with a huge udder. Not funny, but ripe. Milk. Cows as the moon. The horns like the crescent. New. I just bought a harmonica and play it even though I don't know how. I find myself picking it up and blowing chords into it and trying to keep up with whatever's playing on the radio. Or even if nothing's on, I make sounds, tunes. Some way to translate your heartbeat into a rhythm for other people to hear or for yourself to hear. To pass on sounds that aren't like talking and can't be said. Good hums, laughs, a guitar in the middle of the day, the pig decal on the, my typewriter, my dreams, three lovers this week, two put their bodies on top of me as if to protect, care for, one rearranged my closet, part of the sorting, looking inside, the smell of sweaters worn for months, like my patchouli oil and the other odor of myself that I've never defined, but always recognized. The chemical personal smell that everybody has that's his own. I hate to wash the sweaters and take away that smell. A winter of wearing them. I think of what I've done, where I've been. Non-change, cyclic change, sequent change of the I Ching, the coins questions, no return to what starts out of what doesn't end, choice, receiving, my brown sweater in a heap on the floor of the bedroom in the morning after making love, hanging it up, not mending a little hole in the back. The next poem is also a prose poem called Milk from the Ground.
for my face, honey, egg white, milk, all rubbed in, rubbed on, smooth, easy like skin itself. A mineral lettuce bath that's foamy and really hot, me sitting in like a big squash or a root of some kind that hasn't sprouted yet. I feel like taking care of myself, warming, touching, being aware of my body, my spine all the way up and down my back, on the top of my legs, small hairs that I never think about. Every part should have some special thing to rub into it, a reward for hearing, lifting, holding up, holding together, seeing, bending the right way all the time, to nourish, to listen. For two weeks, I've been feeling tired and depleted. What I always feel when I'm about to move into a different house, uprooted, removed from familiar drawers, not knowing where my clothes will hang in the new place or what I'll see from the windows. It's a small upstairs apartment, lots of light. I want to be there without all of the space and emptiness of this big place. I've been around inside of myself so much here that I really need a new breath, new sense for the sounds of floors, neighbors. Moving is such a direct way of starting over. All that throwing out, keeping, making choices, picking up and carrying, leaving behind, life sorting, some things in you have to die to make room for better things. I was out in the garden in the warm late afternoon, no noise except someone run, run, running a vacuum cleaner a few houses away. I thinned pea plants, tied them to chicken wire so they'll grow straight up. I had to take off my big cotton gloves to handle each separate plant. When I began to touch the leaves, I was suddenly aware that the peas were alive. The leaves were cool and clean, very sweet, calm. I found myself trying hard not to pull the plants or to tie any of them in awkward positions. When I was through, I just sat and listened for a couple of minutes. I could hear the garden, the cauliflower white bulbs moving like bells or drums, round, pushing up, and the turnips sounded like hair growing or a child who tries to carry a tune for the first time. Life that I don't fully understand. Like my body, I want to get in touch with the physical parts of the world that are alive and that mean life, that aren't mental, and that won't be carried on when we die. The real physical individuality of me, the pea plants. This year, last week, Ernest, my orange cat, was hit by a car and killed. I want to accept that and make him part of the feeling I have about the garden, birth, life, death, growling at the universe, watching the field change month after month, knowing how to walk quietly across a room, resting in corners. But I can't feel that. I had to look at his body and admit that he was dead and that I will be too. The truth of being alive. I'm usually glad when I'm through doing anything in the garden. I like the idea of growth and the way the plants look, but everything is hard for me. I don't know much, and all of the jobs take more time and effort than I think they will. I don't know how to make the chicken wire stand up around the edge of the garden. I had to fool around and finally get some stakes to tie it to. That took a while. Things like that. But today I felt successful. Everything was neat and watered and had room to grow. I tried to think of other jobs to do there. Specifics, little ways of stretching. I know a lot of reasons why my friend Elaine is desperate and has tried to commit suicide. I know she's unhappy and I can't make less of that than it is, but I want to tell her, talk to her about bodies, plants, games, our ancestors, what we want to be, person, animal, hillside. Not being ashamed of all the small things secret and warm and hidden in the shell of a walnut on a bright day when the animals come to the edge of the forest and look at you and know you love them. 
when the moon comes over you and gives you long nights and turns the grass purple and then the water and the rivers seas. The fish that have known their way out of the ocean for thousands of years but won't leave. Your own body cool against the water that gives itself to whatever shape you are. I want to get old and know how to see without eyes and make myself invisible, real in front of the mirror, standing naked and looking at my neck, belly, ankles, eating food from the garden. All of this makes sense out of drying up for a while and being whole and struggling toward and under, being separated from yourself and then together for a moment. Deeper pleasures of walking, making music, rising and falling. Anemones and sea lilies that are both plant and animal and live in both worlds easily, always what they are. I picture myself in my new place and it's always quiet. I'm alone, feeling my tongue in my mouth, my hands folded, my hair around my face, some sunlight. I know that the succulents I've brought with me are outside, all up and down the stairs, in their clean red pots. My good things are around the house, like the two photographs of myself that I really like. One in a bookstore, I'm sitting on a stack of books looking a little surprised. The other one, I'm walking in a field, carrying some dried weeds I would picked, watching the ground to be sure I put my feet in the right places. Thank you. Next up, Phoebe McAdams. This poem is called Family. Juice runs to my wrist. I love citrus, the clean white part under the skin. Orange have always, oranges have always been with me. They tumble through years, their roundness, all the women who held them out to me, every food a season, you get back to it. I'm older and older, I find what my mouth needs, children, a man, that strength of beginning. I live out the shape, my breast follows its own curve, marriage of two halves, never straight ahead. I listen for what I remember and what I don't is there too, coming with whoever imagines this was next to me all the time. This poem is called Island. We are close as all things against the wind. It comes without asking. Here in his bed, I reach into the last thought before I slept, his body new and all rain through the ground, healing in the pine outside shoots from its trunk greener for the wet morning. My own day starts in wanting him once more. I am not pure. There are other lives. The women who turn inside of me ask more than I have just now. I want to give in to the way later he'll offer food, my hand on a cup. I won't want to leave. We'll talk at the door, his arm easy on my shoulder. Until the rain, the sky over hills, the length of time move, I'll move. Back from San Francisco. We looked at art, Japanese, his penis into her long robes covered with leaves, their faces serious, my ass in jeans, a shirt with clouds on it. I turn into what I want all your blonde and beard too. You lie where you are, I come over, small hairs, it's warm, your belly like salt, not just something I remember. My breasts start that full change against your mouth. You look up, you find my legs across to open your tongue, I taste, you let me for a long time, fast, then not so, then you are over. What flies through me, how the blood as everyone has always been. Private apart, then the leap, not to read it or alone. I lie back, feel good, there's time. Whoever lives next in this house, floors, not asleep, 
till later. And this is a prose poem. Fat women. One. Always Sunday. Waffles or pancakes. The steam rising from the griddle and syrup with butter, with jam, with powdered sugar. Snow melting. A few weeds push up in the vacant low outside. The window. Ants. Mothers, cousins from the farm, necks as big as legs, arms that jiggle and folded fit across stomachs that are like heaven. Endless clouds of eggs and milk, cake, meatloaf, gravy. Alone in my room, I draw a picture of a naked woman, just outlines, and wonder when my own. Two, a long skirt flows over her legs into the floor ground the middle of the earth, and a purple, dark purple blouse with a silver pen, designs of birds, vines between her, her breasts, which are great hills as you drive toward the mountains, reminders of where you're going set against a sky that's afternoon light ready to relax across the highway, the love of sweet bread on an old couch, the movement of a hand toward you, a blanket with embroidery on an old couch, no noise. She is a doe with two fawns that appears out of the trees as you turn into the dirt road that leads to a camp close to a lake full of fish. Three, the upper part of my leg, full, usually hidden, the roundness, the circle, cow, moon, white of flesh, curving up into my butt vagina, leaving to the warm, fertile parts of myself, the same curve as seeing into beyond the ocean, where the earth drops off into beasts with great tails that become islands, the curve of music that goes on to become a woman who lives forever and dies every day in the food, plants, sun, dimmer, and more golden. The end of rain and the boats waiting, moving up and down with the easy tide. Thank you. And our next reader will be Celeste Goyer. Thank you, Phoebe. I'll begin with Country Banjo. The note before the next one, you don't know what you'll play. My own days of lying face down in the land, droughts. I know the way some years are sitting on the porch, an instrument like mistakes. Those days you can take anything, chase, capture. A hand turns your dress the shape of hips. Some days cars go by. You wonder, who names the streets? A pile of letters in the back of a truck. It's not in planning the next move. An inch never equals 20 miles. I end up driving just to feel the road slide. Gaps, bass notes. I could learn to take pictures, crop out an awkward hand, the extra branch. A camera seems easy but you get what you see that way. And next, under my clothes. One, warm, a surprise after weeks of rain. The air is still and secret, night blooming jasmine, the odor of veils, rooms with windows so high you can barely see out of them, weather like my body fragrant as it sinks into the earth, stirring with pleasure, the growth of a small animal in its mother's belly. Two, I want to drive long distances up the coast, watching the city change to fields of lettuce, the leaves of each head of lettuce inside each other, deeper down to the core, the start of an earlobe or my nose, it's warm breathing a little faster, the hand just below a breast, 
moving what I know as the beginning. I want to learn to write with my left hand what I am in bulbs, fantasies, a hidden source that comes suddenly to the surface of the paper. The writing scrawls, leaning but fluid, a surge of running, sex, being just drunk enough to laugh, huge words, crayons on newsprint paper. I write railroad, supper, partly. My hand draws a picture of each word. For partly, there is a woman with her arms stretching and stretching, her face with round cheeks, herbs, and sand dunes, her head thrown back as if she is about to walk a long way or invite a man to come into her. The kind of dress she wants is like glass, something that was liquid, now solid, but still it might melt, return to itself, sink behind the paper into rocks along the ocean, how the water carries us. Three. My mother, a pregnancy full of the tree in the backyard, mulberries, a birdhouse, legs covered with freckles, her upper arms soft, a plumpness of sweet onions growing under the soil, unseen, waiting for the right time. When I'm born, I see the room full of light, the shape of my father. Some things are clear to me. Colors, like the first blood of menstruating, a strip of seedlings across the black prairie earth, deep in June, a hand holding a peach. And I know a house 30 years from that time when I love a man and stay close to him at night, keeping his body around me even through the dreams. And a time far behind when I look into a lake and see my face covered with dirt and wash it, and understand that I am looking at myself, although I don't know what that is. Mountains, forests, all of it moving back toward what is coming, the shaking of leaves. All of this is shadow, haze, the running together of streams, skirts in the wind, shyness, pretense, emblems, riots apples and veins, to fly over the land, looking down to see how the shore trembles from the bottom of the map to the top. The tail of one fish almost out of the water as he dives toward what he is seeing. Nothing breaks off at the edge. And finally, I will read Games of Chance, Escape, Visions, Painting Our Bodies. And it is also in three parts. One, apples, the peach tree just green. Yogurt needs a warm afternoon. Somewhere in the dry leaves, under the bushes, ghosts of winter radishes when I listen. Two, some tribes have a breath name and a soul name. The breath name dies when the body dies. You take the soul name with you. I don't know mine. I keep looking in the open places, spirits everywhere. Do you have to know? Some secrets from myself. What it's like inside the seeds of a green pepper. Three, on a hike through sage, willow, tobacco plants like honeysuckle, you put your arm around me to feel my breast. I don't stop walking, but would have. Anything pressed against anything else. Deer track, dirt road, your leg on top of the sheet. Paw, fable, creases in my hand, stems, frog. I sleep nude, the door open, for the dog, the thief, the man in my dream who wears a blue shirt the shape of his eyes, my body. Quiet doesn't heal the way singing does. Thank you. And I'll hand it off to Barbara Crane. Thank you, Celeste. I'm going to read two 
prose poems. So first is separation. It's that time of day when you are the first one awake and none of your friends would recognize you, even if they came into the room and saw your face. <clears throat> this isn't like the seasons when things naturally give way to the next time, when you watch one huge squash in your garden grow and ripen until it's ready to be picked, eaten, remembered. This is instead a minute or two when you don't want anyone you have ever loved to come back to you. You feel yourself change as if you have turned over suddenly, pulling a long history out of your body. A dream of good and evil. One woman is blonde in a light blue dress. The other woman is covered with her own blood. This bursts into a pattern of darkness in which all the black colors are slightly different from each other, and you feel that you are dying or making yourself die and can't see anything beyond the deep pattern. But the blonde woman writes a letter to the other one and tells her they can never see each other again, that their friendship is over. You realize that there is a comfortable feeling in your stomach and that your body is stretching. Your back, which has been bothering you vaguely for months, doesn't hurt. You sense that you're a sheep. The weather is warm and a farmer with long shears has clipped your wool down to the skin, which is soft, vulnerable. There is sun growing across the field where you live and you watch it as you stand still, waiting for the man to finish. When he lets you go, you take a few steps just to feel what it's like to walk, a lamb. This memory comes to you. One day you ate several flowers and they tasted so different from your mother's milk that you ate some more. You have to run a little, not really hurrying, just noticing the way your hooves push the grass down, just surprised at giving something away so quickly. The second prose poem is Death Valley, November. Ravens talk and circle across a crater where there seems to be nothing to hunt. I turn my body so that the land can see what I look like inside myself, and the gravel doesn't shift. The mountains above me stay where they are. The crust on the ground where I sit doesn't prepare itself for anything. I think of a child with a flat mouth just here in the dust, who only knows it would like to eat or to continue to sit, wishing something but not knowing that there are different days that anything is called more than a space inside its own throat. What passes through me is as slow, as fast, as ground breaking itself toward a lower place. I want indolence, rest, a way to lie down inside the circle, to feel my stomach against my back and the comfort of clothes around me. The light here in the morning is as if nothing changed during the night, gray, and the hills have no edges. Then a skin of warmth. I take off my sweater. Someone starts to talk. A beginning of noise that is of brown and white of salt flats. I can only see the top, but they go far under that. I hear them crack as I stand on them. I hear the man I wanted last year and the days between of not needing his body over mine anymore and choking on how to say that. The time that takes people away from how they first hold on to each other and, and are excited by their own length thickness. Some are repeating it, but with fewer words. I stand at a distance waving goodbye to lovers, my father, my history, the plains, 
to feet that were to go straight ahead. All this shaped in mounds that build themselves out of dust and blowing and disappear as the earth moves under them. There's a kit fox on the road. What I was once with large eyes and how curious I could be about lights in front of me. Here, I don't pretend I'm going to find out anything. The red, the purple in the rocks, no one can tell what they are, the minerals or weather that decided them, and I don't want more than that, and to give my body a way to undo itself. Arms and legs exchange places, and I climb, crawl through a hill of animals who hide, who are funny, who find me, keep their names to themselves. My back slides in the dirt. I'm awkward, not helpless, but not aiming at any target or at sacred mountains that I don't come from. I soothe myself with volcanoes that think for hundreds of years or reeds that aren't trees, but will be somewhere else. Insects and badgers come farther and farther into the desert and find food hidden where they need it. Skin, place of bone, claws, killing, and then what is born in warm times and weather the color of sand to burrow into, leave tracks on. The place between my thighs that stays damp, ready to give in, to quicken and hold and then let go. I pass creosote bushes, ugly but the shape of what they might be in deep soil, and I see how they space themselves to get the water they need, nearly even rows. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Why do why don't each one of us come on the a uh, show? You know, we we have about ten minutes left, so we each have a couple minutes to go around. I just first of all want to say thank you all for your loving, elegiac, joyful celebration of Holly's poetry. She, we're all fortunate to have had her in our lives, and and we still do. You know, it's a real blessing and sacred. She's an inspiration to all of us, and she truly has brought original uh, inner life and the body and what she sees in transformations uh, into the poetry world. You know, one thing, I did a 43-page meditation on this book about a year ago, and what I realized, great poetry you cannot paraphrase. And I tried to understand how she would make a, a line go from one to the next, and it's it's totally mysterious. She goes so deep and she gives us so much, but there's always the mystery. And so now let's start with Allison and then go to Jim, Phoebe, Celeste, and Barbara uh, to talk a couple minutes each. Allison? Well, mystery is the perfect word for Holly. I mean, I think, you know, when I met her and, and became exposed to her writing, I, I just became aware of that life on the other side of things, as she says, I think in one of these pieces, um, that that's always going on all the time. And she just had this, I don't know, almost like supernatural ability to capture the way the two worlds rub together all the time. I just, it was so inspirational to me. It just blew my little young heart wide open with a sense of possibility of what poetry could be. So, yeah. Holly. Jim. Allison, just, you just spoke quite articulately from my own experience of Holly. I, I would, I would add only that, um, that I have rarely encountered anyone in in any field prose writing music visual art acting any of it i've really encountered anyone in any creative field who so genuinely uh embodied mythic consciousness 
that uh, that is the 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 idea that the that the great myths of all cultures are not about things that happened years and years ago but are about what is happening inside us all right now and she had this rem she was remarkably tuned into it um uh how does one become tuned into the mythic this way i think i i think you just have to pop out that way you know she she was a unique and and remarkable person and my life has ha is is greater as a result of knowing her Phoebe. Over, to you, over to you, Phoebe. <laughs> well, I agree with what everyone has said, and um, she may well have popped out that way. Um, you know, she came from the, the place of fat women with all this wonderful food and <laughs> that, that I read. But also, she, um, she it wasn't just a kind of given. She worked at it. When oh, yeah. I remember when 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 Holly and Harry, when you were living here, that she was very conscientious every morning. Um, I have a little side area where there's a couple of chairs, and Holly would go out there every morning with her notebook and um, and attend to her what she called her prayers, her morning prayers. And but this wasn't five minutes. She would be out there for half an hour just kind of communing with that spirit of that spirit in her life. And I don't know anyone. I mean, even I don't know anyone, maybe people in the church are, are, are in tune this way, who was so consciously courting and in tune with, as Alison said, the spirit that rubs up against us. And I realized the other day when I really needed to talk to somebody about something having to do with the, the spirit of, of life and the, the spirit in my life. And I realized there really are so few people that I could call on to have that conversation with. I mean, it was really extraordinary. And I miss her terribly. I miss her every day. Celeste, thank you. In your beautiful, yep. oh my tent, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, I just want to thank all the readers and thank you, Harry. Um, what what a beautiful experience this was today, and it's just so incredibly moving. Mm -hmm. um, the sense of the sacred it just pervades everything that 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 we heard, and uh, how she can just talk about a peach or or the roots of a of a plant and have it be. So, so just glowing with spirit is amazing to me, but, and she did that in the most practical possible yeah. possible way. But um, yes, the, the sense of attention um, as a spiritual practice is just, is also everywhere. Her, something we don't give enough of ourselves is our attention, I think, and Holly uh, gave it so, so well to everything in her life. Uh, farm horses, ears of corn, catalpa, yeah. But um, I just want to also acknowledge that the workshops that she did, um, the the service in the, to the spirit of poetry was consistent, and Harry's too. So, so they gave you both give so much to to poetry, and it's just um, irreplaceable. But um, thank you for letting me be part of this. Over to you, Barbara. Thank you. Uh, I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm speechless in, in, Holly, in Holly's presence, which uh, she's always there. If you notice, I'm over my shoulder here. That's a picture of Holly. Uh, and Holly sits there in our, in our Zoom writing group. <laughs> she sits there every day. Um, there's a picture of Holly and Harry on the wall over here, which you can't see. Um, there's pictures of the writing around. So er everybody is is part of that uh, of those those years, uh, which started in 1978 when I first went to Holly's writing group. Um, I I think. Something that you said, Celeste, about attention. Uh, 
yeah, all of her poems show how much attention she gave to everything, to the to the the smallest, uh, minutest thing in the natural world, in the human world, in the feeling world. Um, and I love her. I love her earthiness here, as you said, Harry, at the beginning, her sensuality and her playfulness. I love the last line of separation. I said, uh, it, she says, um, you start to run a little, not really hurrying, just noticing the way your hooves push the grass down. Just surprised at giving away something away so quickly. This little lamb. Uh, I knew that at that moment when she wrote that, she was that lamb. And all of us become something different and transformed as we write. We become that thing we're writing about. Holly did that so beautifully. Well, thank you very much, James Cushing, Phoebe McAdams, Allison Townsend, Celeste Goyer, and Barbara Crane. You've really uh, given voice to her and everything all of you said has just been perfect. And one last thing I would just like to say about her that uh, I always noticed that she was a rare person who had the ability to see the authentic self in the other. She wasn't fooled. And, and uh, so we could go on forever, but it's time for us to move on. And I want to make an announcement. I want to, I am going to make an announcement. Next Tuesday, our 200th poetry show, we will read from Natalie Diaz's passionate book, When My Brother Was an Aztec. The marvelous readers are Corinne Conley, Kay Wiseman, Ruth Elliott. So thank you all once again. And here's our wonderful director today, Allegra Leadham. So it's time to move on and thank you. A blessing. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. Thank you.